Greetings everyone, I'm George Borden, Solution Architect for Sharp NEC Display Solutions. Thank you very much for joining me today so we can learn more about the CB series from Sharp NEC. The CB series from Sharp NEC is a 4K display. It comes in three different sizes, 65 inch, 75 inch, and 86 inch. It's powered by a solid state media player running Android 8.0. So everything that I show you up to a certain point is going to be happening from within this display from this built-in solid state media player. Now when you turn the device on, the screen that you're looking at here is the first screen that will come up. So we have time and date, we have some application icons, and a couple other system icons. You'll notice this arrow on the right and the left hand side of the board. This offers some additional navigation and some other functions that we can affect to the product. So the first button here is the back button. Because this is an Android 8.0 device, those of you that are using Android devices will have immediate familiarity with this interface. Um, for those that, are, that use other devices, it just takes a little bit of understanding of what some of these uh, couple extra buttons are. So it's really easy to operate. The first button is the back button. The second button is the home button. So wherever you're at in the solution or any external device, if you want to come back to this home screen here, then the home button will allow you to do that. This button allows you to minimize applications and open them up quickly, or you can close them by swiping right or left. So when you have a program open and you close it, it's not closed completely. It's kept here in the standby mode so you can open it up again if you need it really fast. The next button down is a unique feature to the CB series, which is an annotation feature. You can annotate over top of anything that you bring into the product. So when you, when you uh, select the annotation feature, this uh, floating uh, dialog button opens up. And then we have some things on that dialog button to talk about. So the first one is our writing tool. So if we tap on it, it'll change color. The second one is a highlighter tool. And the same thing, if you tap on that, it'll change color as well. The third icon is a broom, which represents erase. So if we go ahead and write on the board, and then we hit the erase button, it'll erase what we did. And then lastly, if we want to save our creation, we hit the Save button, and it will save our, uh, image, our annotation image as a PNG file in a directory label today's date. So it's very convenient to find your file after you get done annotating. The next button down is a zoom feature. So if you um, have a large room, uh, or if there are any uh, folks with disabilities in the room, then you can zoom in and out so that they can see your, uh, your presentation better. The last button down here, next to the last button, we have a couple different uh, novelties or little courtesy pieces of software that we provided. The first one's called Spotlight. So really it just puts a spotlight over top of the background screen. You can make that large or small. Pinch and zoom is available. We also have a countdown clock. And then we also have a stopwatch. And that stopwatch has a lap feature. So those are available. We also have another piece of software in here called AirClass. And AirClass will turn your CB series device into an interactive device as long as it's on the same local area network. So what the user will do is they will take their device, like I have a Google Pixel XL right here, I'm going to take a picture of the QR code and it's going to send me to the network address of my CB series uh, device. So it recognizes me and then I'm going to hit OK to enter. And now it turns my, it, my device into an interactive device. So I can vote A, B, C, D, E, F. I can do true, false. And I can also send a message to the board. So as a quick example, if you wanted to ask a question to the audience, let's just say a true-false question. Then you go into the true-false area here, you start your quiz, and then you ask the question of the audience, and then I'll just say that that answer to a hypothetical question is false, and then I'm going to hit OK, and down here it recognizes that I have voted, so then what the teacher or the presenter will do is they will hit finish, and then it will show your results to the entire crowd instantaneously. So it's not necessarily only for education, this particular piece of software. 
it's relevant for any uh, uh, meeting environment or anywhere where a group is meeting to uh, make decisions or have voting in real time, as long as they have their own device and they can connect to the network. That's a great feature. Uh, last but not least, the last button at the bottom is the input select button. So we have the ability to bring different devices into the CB series and control them from the CB series. And I'll show you an example of that uh, once we get to the end. Let me go ahead and close out my, uh, my application here. And then there we go. So that's the overview of the functionality and the navigation of the CB board. And last but not least, you can see uh, an icon in the bottom right-hand corner of the product. That's where our applications are put. So if you load applications into the product, like Outlook Mail, Adobe Acrobat Reader, you know, Firefox Web Browser, uh, all of those are available for you to load in from APK download sites. Um, like APK Pure, uh, APK.com, those type of websites, and then you can load applications into the product. Now let's look at a couple other pieces of software that we have included. The first one is our whiteboard software, and that's called Mosaic Canvas. So Mosaic Canvas is a very powerful whiteboard. It allows you to have more than one whiteboard in the same session. So it's not just a, a one-off uh, you know, whiteboard, then you have to erase it and you have to build a new one. You can have as many whiteboards in this session that you need to. And that's a unique feature. Down here in the lower left-hand corner, we've got our open, save, save as, you know, your typical navigation for file structure. In the upper left-hand corner, we have where you would name the board. So you would give the board a name and a session a name. And in the middle here is our navigation or our control palette. So when we tap on that, the different implements and items that we can bring into the whiteboard become available. So the first item we have here is the writing tool, and that's the first item up here at the top. So you can do freehand writing at that point. You can change the color. You can change the thickness. And then you can do a straight line if you want. And the same thing, you can change uh, thickness and color with that as well. And then we also have an arrow tool. So if you need to put an arrow in, you know, no problem. The same thing, different thickness, you know, different colors, very easy to do. The next item down is the same type of, you know, uh, the same type of uh, uh, MO. So we have um, basically a highlighter tool with four primary colors and thicknesses as well. So we can highlight, you know, on top of things that we bring in. <clears throat> Let me erase this real quick so I can make more room to show you more items. We have a shape tool. So you can bring in shapes, sh circles and squares can be brought in. And just like the writing tool, you can change the color on those. And you can even invert, you know, if you wanted to invert a different color and you wanted to get creative, you know, with your, uh, with your presentation. So you can do that very easily, no problem. Let's go ahead and erase that. Text is available, as you would expect. So let's go ahead and bring in uh, text. We just put in a text box. And you can see this keyboard now is floating on top of the background. We can then type in our text. And then you can move that text anywhere you want. And if you want to edit it again, you just simply tap on it again. And then your different uh, justifications, you can cut, copy, paste, those show up as well. We can do post-it notes. So if you want to bring in a post-it note, no problem. And then once you do that, you can move them anywhere you want. And at this point, let's just make an example of maybe we're trying to make an association from, you know, one item to another so we can open up our, you know, arrow tool. And if we want to go, you know, freehand, you know, we can do something like that. So, yeah, I'm not an artist, so forgive me. I can't draw a stick figure to save my life. But at least you can see how easy it is for even a non-artist or a non, um, you know, creative person like me <laughs> to go ahead and uh, draw some information on the board. Now, the eraser tool that I've been using here, I've been erasing the whole board, so that's this function up here at the top. You can select items with the second item, so if I wanted to just group and select particular items to be erased, then I can do that. And if I wanted to erase the whole board itself, then I can erase the whole board very easily. Pictures can be brought in, so let's go ahead and uh, bring in a picture. You can pinch and zoom, you can make the picture large or small. And then at that point, you could go into your freehand tool, and if you wanted to mark up on it, you know, you could mark up on it, you know, do whatever you want at that point, just as you would expect. More pictures can be brought in. If 
you don't want the picture anymore, you can drag it to the bottom right hand corner where the trash can is and that'll remove the picture. Now the last icon at the top allows you to save your whiteboard as a PNG image file so you can do that. Or the last option in the upper right hand corner is the download PDF. So we can actually take our creation and we can download either the single board or we can download multiple boards as a PDF file. So it's very convenient. And that is the whiteboard. So there you go. So now let's go on to the second piece of software. This is called Mosaic Connect. And Mosaic Connect will allow up to four users to remote into the CV board anywhere they're located with an internet connection. It's not necessarily meant to be a alternative to the mainstream software that's out there like Zoom, uh, meeting uh, teams, meetings, you know, that kind of thing, go to meeting, whatever you're using, Google Meet. This is more of a, a, a quick and easy way to have somebody present if they can't make it in, um, you know, and they don't want to have the hassle of, you know, using a, you know, a big full-blown application. So here's how it works. You tap on the icon and the software, you know, you can download an app basically for your device. So it supports iOS or Android. And then once you download the application from this website, this is what it will look like. So it's going to ask me for my, my name. I'm just going to put my initials in there. And then I'm going to put my six-digit code at the top. So that six-digit code is down here. And in this case, it's 388-550. Now, if you watch the box on the right, once I hit enter, you're going to see that connection happen. And there's my name. So I'm purely on a, uh, an internet connection here right now. Now if I wanted to present, I can either just present directly from my device or the uh, user at the local level can tap on my name and then invite me to present. So now I'm presenting my phone and I'm using a original Google Pixel XL. That's what phone I have here. And if you have a phone or a device that supports an orientation shift, the software will follow that orientation shift as well. Now, at this point, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to open up your annotation layer, and then you're going to mark up, you know, whatever the remote user is trying to present, just for a bad example. Now, once you're done, you hit the Save button, and then it will save that annotation as a PNG image file in a directory labeled Today's Date. So it's very easy to find the file that you've annotated. Let's go ahead and cancel that. Let's go ahead and stop the annotation layer. Now I'm going to go back into my app and I'm going to stop presenting. And that's how easy it is to use this product. A very simple, a couple other things that it has. It has a built-in whiteboard. So if you wanted to do whiteboarding on this, you could certainly do that. And then it also has a shared item section. And what this, the shared item section will do, it will allow the remote user to upload a file to the session or the, even the local user can upload a file to the session. So if you wanted to share an image file, a PowerPoint file, it's kept in this area here for the session only. And then once the session ends, that media removes. So the software is not a long-term storage uh, cloud software um, solution for your files. It's only for the session that's open up at that time. Now let's go back into um, home again. We'll go back into home. So the last point of this I mentioned before that four users can actually uh, attach to the software, but only one user at a time can present. This will not allow for four users to show simultaneously, and this product will not allow for bi-directional annotation. It's only a one-way delivery of information, one user at a time. And by the way, all this information is available in detail in the, uh, the CV series manual. It's listed, you know, very clearly on, uh, you know, step, steps and tricks. Tip, tips and tricks and steps, you know, that you need to take. Uh, I just merely uh, offer this video uh, for ease of uh, getting into the product. Now, nextly, next, next uh, thing we have over here is the files area. So for files and folders, we just simply click on that. Here are the uh, directories, the master directories here. Here's our subdirectories. You can adjust the view, you know, like you would expect on a, a standard computer. If you put a USB stick into this, it'll show up over here. Forgive me for walking in front real quick, but I'll show you what that looks like. Here's a USB stick. Put it in the front. It's going to ask me if I want to open the files, and it's already uh, there. So there the USB showed up. My files showed up. That's how easy it is to put an extra uh, piece of um, storage in there.
This icon is uh, the browser icon. On your device, it's going to be the system settings icon. But the web browser is a standard web browser. So if you wanted to go to the web browser, just simply click on that. It's going to take you to a default uh, destination site. Let me see if I can go here for a second. If it remembered anything. So at this point, if you want to download apps, <clears throat> then you can go to whatever APK downloader, uh, the, the APK download site that I mentioned before. And when you find your APK download and you select download, then your download is going to end up in the download folder uh, within the file section of the product. So if I go back into storage again and I double click on download, the APK file that you download is going to be loaded there. That is unless you load it on a separate computer and you save it to a thumb drive and you bring it into the product. But you can actually do that all from the, uh, the CV series. Uh, I showed you inputs. So inputs basically this allows for different peripherals to be brought into the product. Um, you can get to that button there, and like I showed you a little bit ago, you can get to that button uh, here as well. Now, to give you an idea of different devices that we can bring into the product, I'm going to open up a picture that you know gives you a better vantage point of the inputs. So on the right-hand corner, and I'm going to walk in front of the camera again, so on this section here, and then under here, are these inputs. So let me open up the annotation layer here real quick to show this off again. Let's go with this color. So we have three additional USB ports, and we also have an HDMI, three HDMI inputs. So you can have three additional devices plugged into the unit through HDMI connection. Now, the USB that's approximately near these HDMI connections can allow the USB to pass to the external device. And what that will do is it will allow the the touch mechanism of the CV to control your external device like a keyboard or a mouse. No drivers are needed. It's called HID compatibility and that's human interface device like a keyboard or a mouse so nothing special. It'll work with just about any um, external device that you can think of. So on this one you're going to do the USB either in one or the other. Over here because it's separated by these little uh, dividers here this HDMI is relevant to this USB port and then down here we also have VGA. So if you have a VGA device and you want to support that with touch, that's compatible as well. Audio can be brought in, digital audio out. We have RS-232 for advanced controls. You can bring an analog out if you want. And then over here is uh, our network interface, our network port <coughs> for uh, internet connectivity. This USB port over here is essentially for a, a service port for the product that's not really relevant um, for file transfer. The product also comes with a wall mount. So a very convenient thing to have uh, if there's non-ADA um, you know, environments, it's not an ADA uh, you know, disabilities approved mount, but uh, if you don't have an environment that is, uh, has that consideration, then that's a perfect thing. The stylus that I'm using here is a passive stylus. There's no power, there's no connectivity. Um, you don't even need to use it if you lose it because your fingers will work on the board um, you can see that the product will take, um, it'll do basically, um, you know, multiple touch points, you know, on the product. So very easy. I can do 10 touch points inherently, you know, from the product. If you have the right software externally on an external computer, we can support um, up to 20 points touch. Now let's see if I'm leaving anything out here. Let's close that annotation layer. With that being said, folks, I think I've hit the highlights with the product. Again, what you have here is um, a, a fantastic product that is powerful in and of itself but allows for you to bring in additional devices. Ah, forgive me, I'm not going to stop and edit this, I'm just going to you know, go by stream of conscious, but I forgot to show you what that looks like. So let me go into inputs. I have two devices hooked into my unit. I have an OPS computer, which is a slide-in computer in the back, and I have a Google Chrome box hooked up to this. So if I wanted to go to my Windows, I just open up Windows 10 OPS, and now I'm in Windows. So I can just go here, forgive me for getting in front. I'm going to put my uh, security credentials in here. <clears throat> and now the unit's booting up. And then we're going to be on a uh, basically a Windows 10 desktop at this point. So you can control it. You see I'm moving, a, you know, I'm moving icons over. You know, if I wanted to go ahead and start some software, I could do that. If you want to annotate over top of this <clears throat> with the annotation layer, just like I mentioned before, not a problem. You can do that really quickly. And then you can save that as a PNG image file if you want.
Let's go back here to the home screen and let's look at the Chrome box. So here's a device plugged into the HDMI connection. And it's just a simple Chrome box desktop at this point. Well, actually it's the, uh, <clears throat> the App Store, Google Play at that point. So let's go ahead and close that. And there you go, just another interface that you can bring into the product. And yes, this thing is completely touch capable. You know, I just touched that, opened up that uh, Google Chrome web browser there. Uh, very powerful feature. So folks, with that being said, you know, the product can be ultimately what you want it to be. Um, you can have the product here with the apps and everything native and functional uh, and, and great. Or you can bring in an external computer, <coughs> excuse me, bring in your webcam, um, you bring in your microphone, you know, whatever you want to do to turn this into a full-blown collaboration device using uh, mainstream software. Um, with that being said, thank you very much uh, for your time and attention. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach back to your uh, local representative. They can reach out to me and I can help you with any more details or questions that you may have. Thank you very much and have a great day.